Welcome to Point to Rise, your podcast that gives you permission to dream big, take messy action, and turn your talent into profit while turning your back on perfection. My name is Suzanne Purcell, high performance and mindset coach, former international ballerina, profitable entrepreneur, and founder of Point to Rise, a movement designed to empower dancers. It is my mission to use my own story as an inspiration for today's generation of dancers. And now sit back, stretch, warm up, or zip your coffee and love learning how much it matters to point at yourself first to rise to all that you are capable of. And we're back. Rising 360. Hi, Gina. Welcome, my darling. So happy to see you. Hi, Suzanne. Always lovely to see you. Um, let's talk about, well, a topic that we're both experts in and yet found our way through, through it. Do you want to announce? Let's do it. Sure. It's procrastination. Yeah. I think this is a topic that all humans <laughs> struggle with, resonate with, you know, have a relationship with. So we thought we'd talk about it and how it relates to us as dancers today. Mm. So can I preface that I consider myself a great procrastinator? Mm -hmm. um, I like to push things out until they really can't wait anymore or until my anxiety gets so bad <laughs> that I really have to take action so I can rest again. And till this day, um, when I'm not really dialed in or have enough awareness, I tend to choose being uncomfortable and live in procrastination over taking messy action and the shorter amount of pain, I would say. Hmm. What about you? And yeah. show, show us your little trick that you have. <laughs> oh. My favorite one. <laughs> okay, I will share. Um, so for me, when things are overwhelming or when I start to get in my head about them and think about all the ways it's going to be a headache or I might not do it well or I might not do it perfectly, I kind of shove it off to the side but instead of alleviating anxiety, for me anyways, that just makes the anxiety grow because I know there's this thing over here that I need to do and haven't done yet. Um, so the little trick you mentioned, I read a book called um, How to Eat Your Frog. And the whole idea is if you have to eat a live frog in a day, why not do it right away? Why not eat your frog first thing in the morning and just get it out of the way? So I started looking at the tasks in my day that I was dreading, but that were super important. And I decided to pick one and call it my frog. And um, according to the book, you know, I need to eat that frog first thing. So I have, I know where I'm um, audio, but I do have a little ceramic frog and this gentleman sits on my desk. He's a boy. And I have to look at this frog until I have finished the task, the task that's most important, but that I have that anxiety about want to push it off. And when I'm done with that task, I can move my frog back under my desk because I'm done with it. And that's really been super helpful for me. <laughs> wow. Well, and that is having the awareness on where we are at and how we operate and how can we motivate ourselves to do the things that need to get done, right? Like that's that's really all it is. Um, you and I talked about what does procrastination really look like in a studio or as dancers? Um, and well, there's there's the usual, you know, not preparing your point shoes, not packing your bag, not looking after your future self um, in the evening for the morning or not going through choreography. But there's also the procrastination of taking care of yourself because it feels, well, either too much, you're too tired to it, it feels overwhelming, or you simply just don't feel worthy of it because mm -hmm. you assume it's just going to go away, right? 
Um, but that that is a way of procrastinating. Um, it's not wanting to deal with what is given to you and and not understanding that if we're, you know, in a proactive kind of state, um, things will be much easier than if we're react in a reaction based state. So that could look like, yeah, not going to the doctor when you feel like there's something starting to hurt. Um, and I'm preaching to the choir right now. I, mm -hmm. I am, I am suffering right now here and I still have that mentality in my head. So just speaking of it, you know, I was like, Oh, it really hurts, but I can't do the workout. I can't do it. I'm going to book you a massage. No, honey, I don't have time today. You know, all of these things that's procrastinating me looking after me, which prevents me from showing up as my very best powerful self. So um, what else, what else does procrastination look like in the studio, Gina? Yeah, so I think that thought of going over choreography or thinking through your class notes is a, is a big one because we all care when we get corrections and, you know, critiques from our teachers or choreographers or ballet masters, mistresses. And yet we're like, okay, I'll deal with that. Another time we walk out of rehearsal, we walk out of class and we move on to the next thing. Um, thereby procrastinating the work and the thought to make the change that will help us to be more successful. Um, I think one of the most one of my favorite times in my career was when I kept a journal in my bag and I immediately after rehearsal or class would write down my notes and not that they would change overnight, but that act of writing them down started the process toward fixing and getting better growth. And I just remember opportunities opening to me once I started this journal right after class, right after rehearsal, because I was showing up prepared. I was showing up as the dancer who cared and who was being intelligent about the feedback that they were receiving. It was one of the most, you know, enjoyable times in my career. And I got some really nice opportunities to perform because I was showing up ready. Oh, that is so good. So from that point on, you took action. You you didn't wait for somebody else to tell you what to do. You actually took action. You um, decided this is what I'm doing for me, um, despite to the outcome. I just know that this will be helpful for me. So when we're talking about procrastination, um, and I'm just looking at the quote that you've written here, and that's, the only difference between success and failure is the ability to take action. Yes, and it's actually not my quote. It's, it's Alexander no. Graham Bell, but I did send it to right, you. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Alexander Graham Bell, right on the show today. Um, yeah, it, it's, it really shines a light on what is the opposite of procrastination, and it's it's action. It's, it's taking that action step even when you have anxiety about it, even when it feels bigger than you can take on at that moment, there's something about the inertia of moving forward and taking an action step forward that makes the anxiety, you know, it has to take a step back because you're taking a step forward. Oh, wow. I think we can stop right there. Yeah. <laughs> it has to stop because you as typey taking a step forward. Um, so what would it look like in a studio? And particularly around procrastinating, taking care of yourself, because that is a really important topic to, to both of us. Um, understanding that having the energy to sit down, let's say after rehearsal and write out the things that are going through your head requires a certain level of energy and brain energy and brain power. And you don't have that brain power if you don't take care of yourself. The first thing we stop when we get exhausted is taking care of ourselves, mm. is working on recovering our body. I was just talking with a friend this morning saying I am 47 years and I still don't pay enough attention to 
my recovery. Mm. And, you know, we're putting so much into the work, but not into the recovery and the procrastination of recovering properly gives you, yeah, everything but the ability to show up the next day as that 1% better that you want to be. So therefore, procrastination and self-care has such a deep, deep, quick spiraling effect that can lead you into burnout in a heartbeat. And that is such a good point. And you mentioned earlier too, procrastinating on when you have an injury or there's a pain in your body and you're not bringing it up, it, it's, it's procrastinating. You're not seeking help to get better in that category. It is definitely a form of procrastination. And so I wonder if the opposite of that might be in your journal. Like today, my hip hurt when I was doing ground up my alasacone with my right leg, you know, just marking down when you felt the pain, what the pain felt like. Oh, yeah. That way you've got, you're armed with um, information to show up with to your healthcare provider and share with them, which is action toward getting that situation healed up. Mm. And it it also gives you the opportunity to check in with you, like where are you at? Like, are you getting tired of writing that down? Is there like a, a huge resistant band in between? And, and if you feel that resistant band getting um, tighter and tighter and tighter and you, it's harder to break through, you know you're mentally exhausted, meaning you have procrastinated on taking care of yourself. Mm. And there's the saying, how we do one thing is how we do everything. It's the truth. If you're not really taking care of your, your gosh, you, you as a, as a person, then how are you going to really show up in the studio as the person that you can be? Um, so, and, and I think we overestimate that the actions that we have to take need to be massive. You know, they need to be groundbreaking, earth shaking. No, no, five minutes of journaling after your day. Um, five, 10 minutes of reading every day. 10 minutes of researching on how athletes nowadays actually recover their body. Versus how dancers recover their body. What kind of possibilities are out there now? That is taking action to better yourself and to become that next version of yourself. Absolutely. So I love our focus that's come up in our discussion today that it doesn't have to take a lot of time and it doesn't have to be a big thing, even one small step forward is a step forward. And then the anxiety has to shrink back because we're taking an action step toward, toward being our best. Mm, beautiful. And before we wrap up, I just want to say that you will find it really, really hard to take action and to not procrastinate if your surroundings are procrastinating. If it is okay in your circle of influence to just flow with the stream and not find your own, then that would be perhaps the first thing I would personally change is my field of influence. Mm -hmm. And I would find people that actually do the things that I know I should be doing, but I'm procrastinating on. Great point. Surround yourself with strong people and, and help to elevate each other up. Yeah. So wrapping this up, um, procrastination is made for us to keep us safe, to, to stay where we are at right now. And at times that, that comes in really handy, but, but overall it's, um, it will hold us back and tying into our episode from last week, it really holds you back from stepping into that powerful version of yourself. It really does. So procrastination, give yourself some grace. We all do it. We all slip into this. I just, I did it today. 
are still doing it. Um, understanding why you're doing it is a good good start. Um, giving yourself grace. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't judge yourself. Don't judge others. Um, and find the people that you know help you to know. Or find a frog, for that matter. Put it on your desk. <laughs> <laughs> or on your front porch. Yes. Um, and, yeah, get out of that that rhythm of this is how I have been doing things for the longest time, and therefore I'm going to stay right here. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we got today for you. Do you want to tie the bow, Gina? Yeah, just we're, I guess, encouraging you to take that one step forward in a category of your life that's you've been setting on the back shelf for whatever reason without judgment, but take that one step forward and feel how powerful it feels when you start to be proactive rather than kind of sinking back into the procrastination. I think it will help just to continue to fuel you forward. Mm, I love it. What did I say? I, I want to you you've written this down when I when we talked about the topic today about procrastination. Um, and I know I am the expert. Oh, yeah. Procrastination is one of the most popular forms of self sabotage. Just putting that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. self-sabotage. And the opposite of that is taking action toward the way that we want to show up. So once again, we kind of come back to a popular theme that keeps bubbling up of responsibility, being responsible to take the action to bring us forward. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. Rate, review, share with whomever you think um, could help this episode if you know somebody in your circle that is an excellent procrastinator send him this or her this episode and tag us on social media we're sending you so much love thank you for being here till next time bye dancers thank you so much for listening if this message resonates with you please pass it on to someone who needs to hear this right now and if you like what you've heard your feedback will go a very long way. If you just take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review, that would mean the world to me. Till next time, point at yourself to rise to all that you are capable of.